Would you be able to tell the difference between text written by AI and text written by a human? Well, a third of researchers can't tell the difference when reading an abstract that has been written by AI and an abstract that was written by a human. We tend to think that it's really easy to spot AI written text, but it isn't. And this is how you can very easily get caught out when writing research papers or academic texts or any kind of essay, even if you're not actually cheating and if you're just using AI to help support you with research, with ideation, or even just with rewriting some sections, there are times that you can get caught out for plagiarizing because you haven't been able to detect the areas where AI might be called out. And that is a big problem. And that's why we really need AI detectors. So in today's video, I'm going to be really excitingly introducing SciSpace AI Detector, which is a new free detector that helps identify AI generated text in both academic and non-academic content. This is a great tool that that can ensure that you can maintain academic integrity and avoid plagiarism and just keep an eye out for AI written text by accident. What SciSpace did was they tested over 4,000 different samples across research papers, different summaries, ChatGPT, Grammarly, Quill, but they had a massive range of pieces of writing that they knew was AI generated or not. And specifically when it came to research paper text, it achieved a score of 96.2%, which is significantly higher than other tools like Grammarly or Quillbot, which means that if you actually do have AI generated text, it is much, much more likely to detect it and not give you a false positive or a false negative um, compared to other platforms. I have spoken about SciSpace before. It is one of my favorite AI tools to use within academia and research. So let me give you a quick tour. So this is what it looks like when you open up uh, the platform. You can start on different tasks, you can do a deep search. And I did a video about this that I'll link down below about the kind of the deep search um, tool on SciSpace. Or you can build different tasks and they have a number of different agents. So you can, for example, search for papers, you can review literature, analyze data, you can do a deep review, use PubMed, Google Scholar, um, you can make a presentation, a Word document. And then if you open up, you can even do more things like write a letter, write a draft text, uh, solve equations, and so many really important things that we all do within academia and research all the time that takes many, many, many hours using SciSpace and all the agents available, you can do so much more. If you continue to scroll down, you can see the agent gallery. And I've spoken about SciSpace agents before. These are essentially workflows within the SciSpace platform, which allows you to run a multitude or a bit of a process of tasks with just one interaction or like one prompt. For example, I can do the journal guidelines checker. And with that one, I can tell it what journal I'm interested in. I can give it my research paper and it will run through the journal and make sure that my research paper meets the requirements, the guidelines and all the other details. So it does all of that with one step and that is what all of these agents are that you can see in front okay, of you. Okay, so I thought I'd run you through one of the agents to give you an example of the process and how it works. So I particularly like the thesis writer because this is one of the agents that I wish I had when I was doing my PhD, but there are so many others. There's literally like 140 different agents that you can choose from. So when you click on the agent, it gives you a already written full prompt and you just tailor it to your own topic or your own needs. So in this case, it's going to create a thesis plan with chapter outlines, milestones, figure, table plan, and a timeline. And of course, I want to give it my topic to make sure that um, it is tailored to me specifically. So this starts to run a process and you can start to see the side by side window. So on the right hand side, I have the plan being executed live so I can see kind of the activity as it's going on. And on the left hand side is the explanation as to what's happening. So the first thing that SciSpace does in this case is it wants to understand the topic. So it first searches through the SciSpace library to understand IQ gap and it conducts research on this particular topic. So you can see on the, on the right hand side, all of that research is there. So I have 50 papers on this topic topic uh, with full text analysis and 20 papers from Google Scholar. So this is fantastic. It's giving me the best possible papers to do with this particular topic. So it's a bit like a literature review. So I think this is really fantastic. 
Then the second thing it does is it extracts key insights from this research to then give me an understanding of the th structure of the thesis. So it will then say, right, chapter one will be this, chapter two will be this, these are the subheadings, these are the subtopics, this is um, how long they should be, this is what you can include in terms of the word counts, um, and also give me a bit of a timeline as well. So I've said, let's just assume I have six months to write this, okay? Then it goes ahead and gives me a bit of of a timeline so what the metrics would look like when I finish writing and even my post defense plan as well so things to do with um, manuscripts and and publishing and things like that and then finally it gives me a, a calendar so a bit of a structure to how I'm going to actually complete this or I can give a follow-up task so I could say actually how about we focus just on chapter one how about we think about just this section. And like I said, there are a number of different agents that you're able to experiment with um, and run a whole process with just one prompt. Another really useful new feature is that every answer includes clickable interactive citations with paper details. So when you open up an answer, you get to see all the details for that paper and then you can save in a collection. So you have your own collections in your library and you can bookmark these papers into your SciSpace library to organize them and revisit them later. Let's focus now on the AI detector. Okay, really, really simple. You have the academic AI detector and there's two ways that you can input text. You can either input just a block of text or you can upload a PDF and I'll show you both of these. You're also able to do both scientific and non-scientific text, which is good if you're just kind of writing something a bit more generic. So I'm going to show you this in action using something that I know is not AI um, written and something that I know is. So this is ChatGPT. I've got a quick 150 word abstract. I'm going to take it from ChatGPT directly, paste it straight into SciSpace, and it's going to analyze it within seconds. You can see that it says it's 100% AI. There's no doubt. There's no moderate. There's no low. It's 100%. And I copied and pasted it from ChatGPT. So that is kind of what I would expect. Um, and then it tells you how you can improve your score. You could paraphrase your text and that takes you directly to paraphrasing again on SciSpace using their paraphrasing tool. You could change your tone and writing style or you could improve your grammar and punctuation. So when I click on paraphrase, it takes me directly to a prompt uh, on SciSpace and it paraphrases my text for me. Now I want to caveat by saying that this AI detector is not a way to humanize text. It's not a way to cheat. It's not a way to kind of cut corners. It's a way to help you identify what may be detected uh, or what will be detected as AI generated and allows you to rewrite those sections. So even by paraphrasing it here, I'm not just going to copy and paste that um, directly into my essay or my research writing. I need to still make sure that I'm writing it in my own words. And this is the paraphrase tool. So I'm able to change sort of the tone I like, whether it's academic, fluent, formal, I can change the length uh, of text so then I can shorten it so it's half the size, for example, or I can also change the variations. So that means how much of the text do I actually want to be changed? Um, so I've said a quite high variation, so it will completely change how I do things and how things are written. Okay, now I'm going to run a bit of a test. I'm hoping that SciSpace pulls through for this one because if it doesn't then the whole thing <laughs> is a little bit pointless so let's see um so i'm going to my phd thesis that i wrote back in 2017-18 pre-ai pre-chat gpt so you can guarantee that this was not written by ai i'm just going to go to my abstract just to make it a little bit quick and easy and i've copied a section from my abstract and then i'm going to go to the detector and i've uploaded it and it says zero percent Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, you passed. So it says 0% um, essentially human. So it's almost entirely written by a human. There was one sentence that is moderate AI. Um, and I think one of the things with AI uh, and actually with academic writing in, in particular is a lot of academic writing is quite formal and is the kind of writing style that you'll find across a number of research papers. So the way that you write in academia, I've said this so many times in like my courses and my videos, the way you write in academia is not the way that humans usually speak. It's not the way that humans usually communicate or interact. So there may, there may be times like this where that, for example, that first sentence, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't say indeed reduction. Like I wouldn't say that. That's not human. So that's one of the reasons why it kind of was pulled out because it doesn't sound very human. So if I want to maybe just clean this up, I could change that word indeed. Um, but it's fine because it's still 0%. So I don't really need to do anything. But if I really wanted to make it sure that it's fully uh, human sounding, I could change the indeed and just say, just get rid of indeed and just start with reduction in ARP23 activity. And that just probably will make it sound a little bit better. And all that this does is gives me confidence that when I submit this abstract, I am not going to get in trouble for something that I haven't done. As academics, we are going to be using AI in this day and age. So it, we want to make sure that the way we're using it is reflected in um, any AI detectors that may be used on our work. Now you can also upload a PDF. So this is the PDF that I've done in the past. So this one was human written. So I wrote this myself. I think this is for my thesis as well. And again, you can see that it is completely human. Zero out of 52 sentences were AI written. So again, this is, I'm pretty sure it's from my introduction of my thesis as well. So I, I think it's quite easy for detectors to check if something is AI, but I think it's a lot harder for them to check if something isn't AI. So that's why I wanted to test on something that I knew was 100% not AI and I haven't used any like Grammarly or any other tools on this piece of work. SciSpace is genuinely one of my favorite tools that I have been using for a little while now actually. And as I mentioned, I've mentioned them. And as I said, I've mentioned them so many times on this channel and they've always been the first to release things like the agents, for example, and even this AI detector is the best on the market. Um, so I have partnered with them in this video and they are giving me a discount code. Um, every All the details would be down below in the description. There'll be a code, there'll be links, etc. It will all be there for you. But if you want me to send it to you directly, then please leave me a comment down below and just say SciSpace <laughs> and I'll send it to you directly. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, let me know if you want to see more videos like this from me and I hope to see you in my next one. Okay, bye.